Hey, hey, everybody. So it's your girl, Haram, and we are getting ready for our Bible study together. Um, I'm going to be reading from Jude today. Um, and I really hope that it blesses your life and that it changes your life. So before we get into um, the word, let's pray together. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people and to hopefully be speaking to myself as I read this. I pray that your word does not fall on deaf ears. I pray that our ears are open and willing to listen to the word that you have for us today and that our hearts are open and receive the word that you have for us god i pray that our hearts are good soil good ground so that your word can grow and take place in our hearts god i pray that the word renews us and transforms our mind god and i pray that it's all in alignment with the things that you have for our lives i pray that if we are convicted of certain things i do pray that you bring them to our awareness and help us to turn from those things and to make better decisions and to become more righteous and to become more holy, God. I thank you for what you are already doing, even as I'm just recording this to give to your people. I know this will bless them, and I thank you for blessing them and for letting me be the one to give the word. In your most holiest name we pray, amen. Also, God, be an oracle, speak through me. Don't let me speak my own thoughts, but your thoughts. Use me. I am your willing vessel. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So, you guys, we are going to start. And what I want to read is I want to read to you the opening of Jude because I think the opening is very important. So, I want to cover it. So, this is what it says. It says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. It was needful. Let, let's hold on to that. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort, strongly encourage, or urge you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto saints. Okay, guys, that was my uh, my Bluetooth. Don't pay it, not mind. Um, so, this is important, what he's about to say. Okay, so, 14 and 15, and just so it's out there, I am reading from the King James Version. And I strongly advise that you guys always grab your Bible, um, whether you pull it up on your phone, whether you pull it up on your iPad, or pull it up i strongly advise that you have it and if you have your your bible like i got mine then oh that's a lot of me then um you know uh to have it and to read along with me that way what i'm saying you know what's in there okay and this is just good that way when you go anywhere to any church to people whatever you always follow along to make sure it's it's in there so people don't tweak things. Because one of the things that is talked about in this Bible is um, false doctrines, uh, doctrines, yeah, and false prophet, uh, prophets and such. So you want to be careful. So read along, people. Tip from your girl today. So here we go, 14. And Enoch, also the seventh, and seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his servants 
to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him so i wanted to break this down because you know it says that he's gonna that the lord is gonna come with ten thousand of the saints to execute judgment upon all so let's let, let's highlight that let's pay attention to that to execute judgment upon all meaning each and every single person human being so this is important and then it says and convince all that are ungodly so to convince those that are ungodly you know as a matter of fact let's look up what ungodly means so we can we can understand exactly and uh, don't be surprised if you see me out here googling the definitions of things because i think it's important to to nail it specifically not have our own thoughts okay here we go ungodly okay so it says irreligious irre or immortal so ungodly so unholy unholy mm -hmm. unholy uh, so similar is unholy godless and okay and unreasonable earlier okay so now that we have that it means irreligious or immortal ungodly lives of self-obsession lust and pleasure mm, that was so intense. so in here he's saying ungodly um so amongst them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him and him is the lord so let's get that together so i was thinking like as i as i read this what came to mind was you know a lot of the time people are sinning and they don't know they don't know they don't know that they're sinning they and, and it's because they don't know god or they don't have a relationship with god and how can you know what's right or wrong to a person if you don't know the person if you don't know the spirit if you don't know you don't know you know and a lot of times um we get caught up doing things because we are desensitized to sin because the world itself is sinning like crazy and when you're around things that are worldly i'll say that are sinful and so many are doing it and it just seems like that's life and it's normal that's a that's a way to get stuck in the cycle stuck in the wrath stuck in corruption and the only way to free yourself and to be free of those things is to know what is right in God's eye. And so I'm going to go through breaking down. So I took some notes. So I'm going to be reading and speaking and clearing everything that I got. All right. So it says one thing that I wrote down. It says people sin because half of the time they don't know they are because they don't have a relationship with god or read their bible so what do we want to do to prevent ourselves from being the ones that he is coming to judge and don't get me wrong he's gonna judge but the thing is we want to not be judged for 
the ungodly thing and and sometimes it's, a, it's the smallest thing of just not accepting jesus as your lord and savior and believing he is the son of god sometimes it's you know because once you give your life to god you know you're forgiven and you're going to heaven but people mistake can god's grace for um get out of jail free card you know like do whatever you want it's okay god's gonna save me but that's premeditated premeditated sin so we don't do that when you know what's wrong you need to acknowledge it repent and fix the way but besides that though back to what i'm saying how do you know if you don't have a relationship with god or read his word you need to read the word the bible has everything you need to know in it everything everything and what it isn't telling you your holy spirit can tell you but you need a relationship with god this is not something you can figure out on your own this is not something you will figure out on your own this is and requires a real relationship with God and his word. So, the next thing I have is, how can you know you are breaking God's heart when you don't spend time with him? How do you know? How do you know? Truth is, you're not going to know if you're not spending time with him. Just like you would spend time with a person you love or care about. It's the same thing. God will tell you what breaks his heart. It's in here. That's why he's, you know, setting the captives free, healing the people. You know, but you won't know that if you're not reading the Bible, if you're not having a relationship with God. People think, too, you know, that they could just read the Bible and then they become a scholar in the Bible, but have no relationship with God. How is that going to bless you? It's almost better to have a real relationship with God and not know the Bible, because it's Paul, right? But you have to have a real relationship with God. And you need to read his word, though. That's why he gave us the word, so we could read it. So it's important to have the two. The two. Not just one or the other, but both of them. Because this, this book, the Bible, is what's going to help you fight in life. As well as the Holy Spirit. So learn your words because when you learn what the Bible says and when the enemy comes against you and starts talking all this, that, and the third, you have the Bible. You have the Bible to talk back, to fight, to stand up for yourself. You know, and it's not just by you. It's by God. God's word is the living word. And his word works when the devil is trying to, you know, tempt you or do anything it, it's clearly shown in luke 4 you read it when jesus was fasting 40 days 40 nights and how he fleed and resisted the enemy with the word so this is this is important okay and then and so is having a relationship so get to know jesus not what people say about him but who he is, okay? That way, when people start to tell you about him, people won't be able to tell you a lie or this or that or the third because you personally know him for yourself, you know? You can't defend something you don't know, but you can defend what you know. You can fight and stand for what you believe and because of what you know about him. When people are telling you, oh, your dream is too high, you ain't ever going to be nothing. You say, oh, no, 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 no. God said, walk by faith and not by sight. God also said, blessed are those who have not seen and still believed. So you'll have words to come at them and it won't be a you know, rude thing. Like, who do you think you are? You ain't ever got not be nothing. You can come with the word and, and you don't even have to defend yourself nor fight. God will do that for you, you know, if you seek him first. 
seek him first, and everything will be added unto. Well, seek the kingdom of first, and everything will be added unto you. So, know the word. That's how you're going to survive in this life. Not by friends, not by family, but by the word. Because until you believe something, until you believe something, nothing can happen. And that goes with negative thoughts and positive thoughts. But if you want to know the truth, read your Bible. Spend time with your Holy Father. Heavenly Holy Father. Okay, third. How can you know what someone loves, cares for, cares for, or how to please them when you don't talk to them? And that's for God. How can you please him? You know, it's like you're in a relationship, right? And your partner, okay, this is for grown folks, so little kids, don't be in a relationship. See God, God alone. But for those who are married, okay, we're going to talk about the married folks. How do you know about your partner, what they like, what they dislike, how to, you know, add to their happiness, because you shouldn't be their only source of happiness, um, by talking to them, you know, asking questions, getting to know somebody. Um, that is the same way with God. Get to know him, talk to him, spend time with him, read his word, and it could be as simple as God. Um, What do you like? Open the Bible. And you you might just land on it. I mean, I open the Bible and I land on all my questions. I do. Um, or he talked to me. Either one. But that's what you have to do. You have to build a relationship. And one thing I want to make clear, too, is because I think people really got God misconstrued real mm -mm. let me clarify this for those of you who don't know god is not a genie okay god is not a make a wish i give it to you that's not god god is our father if you've elected him god is a father god is our god our lord so what does a father do? And I'm going to break it like this. When you are 12 years old, wanting to drive a car, your, your parent is going to tell you, no, you can't have my car keys and go drive. No. To you, that's, oh my God, they're so mean. But to them, it's, I'm protecting you. You could go drive into the street and run over somebody let alone have somebody run into you it's it's a detrimental situation and so he says no then you know maybe your parent is like okay let, let's go on one together but we're gonna say when you're 16 okay and 16 you're like hey i want to drive can can you can can i drive your car and then your parents like I'll, I'll go with you. You can drive, I'll sit in the passenger side. And then they teach you and guide you through it. They don't just throw you out into the world because that's what you ask. They're like, let me teach you what I know. Whether it's them teaching you or sending you to driving school to do so. They're still in the process of preparing you, making sure that you're fully equipped so when you go out there, you are safe, you are wise, and you are able to do it effectively. So that is God. God is a God that will train you up and prepare you for what you're asking for. Not just give it to you. Because, because a blessing can turn into a curse real quick if you are not prepared. prepared. So I just want to clarify that. God is a loving God. He takes his time. And let's thank him for that. Thank you, Jesus. So, then it says, well, what I wrote was, running from God is running from who you are. And that's true. 
if I built a coffee maker, right? And it has like 20 different things it can do. Wouldn't you want me to tell you what it can do? Wouldn't you want me to write down the instruction of telling you what all these 20 things do? Or would you rather want to try it for yourself and then it explodes, blows up, catch on fire? Whole disaster. Or would you rather read all these 20 things I could do or watch a YouTube tutorial on what this coffee pot can do? Because why does it have 20 things it can do? What all does it need to do but make my coffee? Make a smoothie. She would make everything you ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? But you would want to read, learn about it. Right? You would want to use it effectively and you would want it to last. Especially if I'm charging you like $500. You gonna want it to last for a thousand. Because this is 20 different things. This ain't two. This is 20. So... What are you gonna do? You're gonna wanna take care of it. You're gonna wanna treat it right. You're gonna wanna clean it. You're gonna wanna get to know it so it does what you want it to do. And the same thing goes with God. If God gave you all these gifts, if God gave you purpose, if he gave you a calling, if he gave you a position in this world, skills, gifts, talents, I mean, wisdom, knowledge, I mean, created the way you smile created the way you blink i mean created your hair knows how to get it to look good when it's a bit complicated or your characteristics you know and the morals you have like these things are dna type of things wouldn't you want to go to god and ask him because you can god Who am I? What can I do? What did you create me for? And not like a, a why, but God, tell me who I am. And then you're going to read the Bible. And then you're going to find out who you are. You're going to find out who you are. So when people are saying this, that, and the third... It won't even matter because you know who you are in Christ. You know that he died on the cross for you and me. And that's what gives us value, not people. And then I have, and why wouldn't you want to know who you are and love yourself? Why wouldn't you? Who wants to live in distress, feeling unworthy? Nobody. So how do we feel and know our worth? Easy. Read the Bible. You know, there's um, a part for women where it talks about you're worth more than rubies. I mean, there's a lot of stuff he, he speaks on women. <laughs> Even us being made from Adam's rib. I mean, we ain't below. We ain't above. We're equal. Um, but it's, it's a lot, though, you know, what he says about us, though. So read your bible so you can know who you is and don't need nobody to tell you who you are because god told you okay then i have many things that they have to run because there's no way god could love them or care about them because of their sin sins as if god doesn't forgive oh god is a forgiver you guys mm, hate to Bust your bubbles if you think he's such a cruel God because he's not. He says it himself, slow to anger and merciful. So God loves you and can't nothing separate him from you. You can separate yourself, but he's not going to separate himself from you. God loves you. All it takes is a genuine though. You know, God, I'm sorry that I did this and that. Forgive me and help me to make better decisions. Clean my heart. Make me, you know, help me change. Renew my mind. Cleanse my heart. Search me. Expose me to you. And then help me to change. And, but this is what, um, 
Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called, which we already know because Jude said, gave us a message for the called, okay, the called, he says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. But he said, you know, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. So, go back to called. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Did you hear that? I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. So let's go through the breakdowns of what you have to do because we don't want to be them people that Jesus is coming back judging and convincing us of our ungodly sin. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not trying to burn in hell. I'm not. Earth already, you know, we got the mixture because we got the devil and we got God, but I'm trying to go where Jesus says there is many mansions, there is peace, no sorrows. I'm trying to live my best life in heaven. Best me though. And so this is what he says. Key. Humble. Humble themselves. What does that mean? Accepting partnership with God. Accepting partnership with God, but knowing he is above you. You can't do nothing outside of God and his help. That's why he says he is the, he is the vine. We are the branches. We need God. He says it again when he says, you know, we can't do nothing by ourselves, but we can do all things through Christ. All things through Christ. It comes to a humbling. Yes, God is above us. He's above us. He's superior. He is. I don't I don't understand why that's such a problem. But he is. So humble yourself. Come into covenant. Come into agreement. Come into relationship with God. Humble yourself. Accepting partnership with God. Not thinking you can do it all. Or anything on your own because you can't what you accomplish and establish by yourself you will keep by yourself that's why if you notice you know for the ones who do it by themselves and I was included you know you have to do the work to sustain it it's you're praying for the blessing you're praying for the phone call you're praying for the breakthrough it's a constant need of God's help even though we didn't ask him what he wanted. Is this even something we should do? This is just the God come into my plan. When in actuality, God does say what he has for us. He will establish. He will establish. Meaning it won't be a burden. It won't be trial after trial. It won't be tribulation. It won't be constant error going down the hole. It'll be a rise. It'll be a rise because his hand is in it. And what God's hand is in cannot fail because God is not a God that he can fail. Let's get that straight. So, key. Humble yourself to pray and it says talk to god with honesty like your best friend talk to him like he is your best friend i mean pour out your heart and the truth having a good day god thank you for this beautiful and blessed day thank you for all that you've done all that you're doing thank you for considering me thank you for doing everything for me the things i didn't even ask you for and as a bonus answering my prayers you know and then, God, oh my gosh, I just had the worst day. I just ran into such and such when I thought that, blah, blah, and this and that and the third. And God, my heart hurts. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't ready for that. Please, just give me your strength. But we're not going to say please because he's our father. He don't need 
please you don't need beggars so we're not gonna play god can you help me okay come to him any way you want god thank you for that parking spot in front of the grocery store i don't know about y'all but i'll be praying for parking spots and the lord be giving me front row thank you jesus so pray third seek his face mm. and this is look for him desire his presence and that is sitting in stillness that is listening to worship music that is spending time with him focusing on him that is just embracing him god thank you god i love you god you're so good to me god wow what i just read in the bible is so touching i know for me i'll read the bible and i'll read certain scriptures and i'll just be like wow god how you are so sweet how you love your people you know but but that's just me but to just have time with him seek his face god i want to see your face show your face show me who you are you know just seek his faith go looking for him and he will show up i ain't never looked for him and he ain't ever been there he always there get that get that straight and then i have hebrews 4 12 it says oh oh yeah this is okay look for him read his word because that's when yeah read his word because that's when he's talking to you now hebrews i mean that's another way of him talking to you but his book the holy spirit the holy spirit the Holy Bible is a love letter to you. A love letter to you. God gave two things. The Holy Spirit and the Bible to help us navigate through this world. Now, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edge sword piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart you guys my handwriting is a little sloppy but i think i got the word for that that's why i said read your bible with me so yeah, so with that saying that, then the NIV says, alive and active, saying that for God's, for the word of God is alive and active, meaning this isn't just thousands of years ago. His word still stands and applies till this day. Till this day, everything you need is in this book everything i can read things and they jump out to me in certain situations and it applies to exactly what i'm going through and sometimes if i don't understand i will say god help me understand god what are you trying to tell me god what does this mean i do that i don't believe i know everything i believe god knows everything and i also believe that he can pour it into me and give me revelation and he does and he does and yeah usually he gives it to me right away actually mm. but there's levels build your relationship with jesus with god with the holy spirit they are all one but build your relationship with them all okay that way when you know you have the holy spirit you can talk to the holy spirit and the holy spirit is a guide counselor helper come on don't cheat yourself treat yourself with the holy spirit's help okay why would you want to go through life alone it ain't easy but it is to god because he created everything he knows everything he knows how to navigate through everything why not have his help i mean it makes me feel like i got a cheat code in life i i appreciate it i'm grateful okay so then the other thing is turn away 
from their wicked ways. So that's the other one. So we have key, humble themselves, pray, seek his face. Now we have turn away from their wicked ways. What does that mean? Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Acknowledge what is wrong in what you are doing. Because when you acknowledge the wrong, then you know and understand for yourself why it's not right. And when you understand that, you think about that before you do it because you're like, mm, if I do this, I know it's going to hurt such and such as feelings. Oh, if I do this, I know I'm not going to feel good about it later. Figure out what is wrong about it. Don't just, mm, I'm sorry. It, God, I... I should have known better, but I didn't, and I'm sorry. Then you go do it again. Learn the lesson because that's what's going to prevent you from doing it again. Or at least help you, okay, from doing it again. Okay, then talk to God about it and ask him to help you change. Mm, that's, 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 that's a word. Pray about it and ask for him to help you change. Because you can't do it by yourself. You can't. You really can't. I used to have a cussing problem. Because I've been cussing my whole life. I used to have a cussing problem. But when I told God yes. When I told him yes, I'm going to do this. And when I committed to it. Before I knew it, I stopped cussing. I didn't even notice I stopped cussing. I just stopped. And one day I realized I stopped. But, I mean, it came with a bunch of sacrifices, like, you know, as far as, like, being careful of the things I listen to, the things I watch, spending a lot of time listening to worship music and gospel songs that made me worship music. And that just kind of cleansed me. And then also reading the Bible, reading his word and spending time with him, and I asked him to change me. I asked him to change me, get these worldly things out of me um so ask him to change you and to to turn from it um then i have ask from your heart yes it has to be sincere it has to be sincere god is a god of hearts god is a god of hearts he is not a god of your thoughts he is not a god of um what you speak you know, he's a God of your heart. He's not a God of your appearance. If that was the case, David wouldn't have been the king. The first child who Samuel looked at would have been anointed. Um, but I'm assuming God learned his lessons because Paul was, not Paul, but Saul was a handsome man and strong. And then he ended up disobeying God, but but that was what he was looking at at the time. Um at least what it says about Saul. And um, with David, he told Samuel, look at the heart. Heart. Look at, we don't look at the outer man appearance. Which even before they went to David, God said, I found a man after my own heart. So God is a God of hearts. If your heart is impure, clean it. God still loves you. He don't hate you. He could never hate you. If that was the case, he would have just died for some people, but he died for everybody. So it's important to examine your heart, to examine it, and then to acknowledge what's in it, and then give the gunk to God. Give him your heart to cleanse and to fix, and he will. It's not a you thing. You don't have to quit doing things first. You don't have to do nothing. You just have to come in full surrender and okay so you just have to say yes and god will do the rest that simple say yes god will do the rest it's nothing more you ain't got to figure it out you ain't got to have it all together it's a simple yes god and he will do the rest for you okay yes i am willing to let you invade i'm not going to say invade but it might feel like that i'm going to let you examine my heart I'm going to let you examine my heart and cleanse it. Wash me clean. Purify my thoughts. Purify my heart. You know, one of the prayers 
that David prayed for Solomon was give him a pure heart and a willing mind. Pure heart because David knew the importance of a pure heart. So let's not overlook that. Yes, it's deceitful because God says he don't trust no man. Don't believe me? Read your Bible. But God will also go in and clean up that heart if you allow him to. Um, then I have... Oh, no, it looks like I wrote a lot for that one to change. Oh, then I said it won't be overnight. That's good that I wrote that down because it's important. It's not overnight. It's over time. And it's a continual sacrifice. It's, it's, it's labor. It's a job. It's a, God, I'm choosing you today, like loving a person. You don't just love a person forever. You keep choosing to love them. You keep picking them. You keep choosing to be nice. You keep choosing to grow with them. You keep choosing to love them. And the same goes for God. You have to keep choosing, I'm going to do God's way. Do it God's way. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to give it all to God. It's, it's a choosing because God gave us free will. Free will. He's a gentleman. He's not going to just come in and, um, and take over your plans or take over your life or just do things. It's, it's a invite him in. You have to invite him in. And it's simple. It's as simple as God. I invite you into my life. God, I want to experience you. I want to know you. I want to grow with you. I want to see you. I want to love you. I want to know you. I want to fight for you. I want you to fight for me. It, it's an it's a inviting thing. It's an inviting thing. God said, you open the door, he gonna come in, invite. God, forgive me of my sin. That's an important thing, though, to repent. Mm. That is like a number one, to repent. You need to repent. That's why God was so gracious to David, even though David was a man of many mistakes. He repented a lot. He apologized. And he asked God to let him learn so that he could save his people. So repentance is important, very important. And I got a Bible scripture for you to go with that. And let me see if I can get in a second. Because mm, where I'm leading to is forgiveness. It's forgive, forgive. So we have... The key things are humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. Now we're on forgive, so we're on number five. Forgive, acknowledge what's done, and extend grace. Mm, extend grace, even to yourselves, okay? Because God knows we are but human. And then move on. Don't, you know, when God forgives you, don't become a tormentor to yourself don't do that don't don't become a tormentor to yourself when god frees you be free be free and where i want to go actually because he talks about repentance mm -mm -mm. okay we are in mark is this chapter two yes mark two seventeen. 17 mm. And this says, when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of a physician. Meaning, he know we sick. Anyways, <laughs> but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. So, repentance is important. God is holy. Why would you why would you not want to be clean? Why would you not want to be holy? Why would you not want to be better for yourself? You know, the reason why I chose God is because the more I read the Bible, well, the reason why I chose God. First of all, let me clarify that. I always chose God, but I also chose my way. Okay, let's not talk like that. I never departed from God. Let, let's get that straight. But I did choose my own way. But what made me do the full turnaround 
and say yes god i give you my dreams my wants my desires what made me do that was because as i was reading the bible spending time with god i realized how much he loved me and when you are loved by the right person when you are loved by the right person i mean feeling safe feeling confident feeling worthy i mean loved by the right person who allows you to be you and loves all of it the good the bad the ugly i mean all of you you want to become better for them you want to naturally do the things for them that makes them happy you want to naturally pour into them call out their goodness call out their gifts pour into them i mean you want to do what they want you to do because they treat you so right and that's what it, what it is with god like once i understood the depthness and hear me when i say god for me has always been great to me which is why i decided a long time ago i would never never trade him in for anyone else he showed up for me he was there for me in my darkest times i mean him and him only so this time around i i prayed and i said god show me your character your character like i know you showed up for me in this situation i know you have my back i know you 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 love me you care for me this that and the third but show me your characteristics and he started to reveal to me that he's great kindness that he's gracious he's merciful he's slow to anger you know and and, and so on and then as i i read of him my heart only melts because he loves every every inch of you every thing about you like there's nothing in your mind like think about all the crazy things you think about that you would never tell a person all those things in your heart that you feel that you would never tell a person and then he knows all those things and doesn't say to you mm, you are just trifling you need to get it together i'm tired of being around you're never gonna change god is a good god to where he just patiently waits patiently waits patiently loves you patiently cleans you up patiently like this is what i'm saying he is such a gentleman picks you up when you fall it's okay it's okay when everybody leaves you i will never forsake you so repent apologize to god i'm sorry you know paul said when i was a child i did childish things when i was a child y'all we're not children anymore and if you are a child and you are doing childish things <laughs> you will grow into becoming wiser and you will learn from the things you are going through God loves you. He loves me. He loves old people. He loves young people. He loves fresh babies. He loves, he loves. And so you want to apologize because he deserves better. And heal. So heal. Heal means, because we have, the keys are humble yourselves pray seek his face turn from your wicked ways forgive now we have heal and heal is becoming at peace becoming at peace and healthy again cleaning things up cleaning cleaning it up letting god do a search and clean you and heal you it's wholeness it is wholeness be healed is wholeness and it says not giving power to the to the dead thing anymore mm, can I, 
I'm going to say that one more time. Not giving power to the dead thing anymore. Becoming alive again. Becoming alive again. Whew, that is powerful. And then I end with, I say that to say, if you don't know your father, you want to know. Oh, you won't know. My bad. Wrong. And to know him is to spend time and read his word. Turning everything over to God is giving him permission to search you and cleanse you. Shining the light on darkness within you and around you. It's asking God to help you and allowing you to change for his will and his glory. Mm, it is partnershiping with God for his kingdom, to bring his kingdom here to earth, to rally up his people and his children for the fight, for the good fight, the fight of faith, the fight of deliverance, the fight to save his children. That is deep, y'all. Mm. And then I said, <laughs> I added that part, but... Then I said, I mean, who wouldn't want to make their father proud? Who? What child doesn't want to make their, their parents proud? And do things just to make them proud. Mm. And then I end with, let his light pour in. Mm. And with all of those things I mentioned, it's nothing for God to forgive you it's nothing for god to love you and in doing these things can prevent us from being 14 and 15 can prevent us from having to deal with all the judgment of the ungodly things no we're not perfect that is why jesus christ died on the cross let's get that straight but but there are certain things that can be transformed and renewed or else Jesus wouldn't say, you know, you're old creation and a new creation in Christ. The old things bad and you are now a new creation in Christ. He wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say new if it was impossible. What does he say? Transform your mind to the renewing of his word. With the renewing of his words, so transform your mind. You guys, you, honestly, honestly, I'm going to quote what the Bible says because I'm mixing it up a little bit. I'm, I've been speaking too many. Hmm. What is this? Okay, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. Give me a second, y'all. Okay, so what is it? Renew your mind. Re That's what it says. So let me type in King James Version because I like King James. Okay. So this is Romans 12. It says, I think it's 2, 12, 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. The ungodliness. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Okay, and then I'm going to give you the, the exact thing the Bible says about um, becoming new in Christ. So, becoming new. It says, I think I, I um, butchered that a little bit too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. This is telling me people's thoughts. Let me go to verse. Okay, that's the NIV. Let me go to the King James Version. Okay, so it's Second Corinthians uh, verse 5. Hmm. 
Dang, this this got me really okay, so hold on, it's not very fast. Let me click on this and see what it says. Oh. Hmm. This does not look like what I asked for. This says anyway. This wasn't the one I was looking for, but it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But this was about leaving the old. Hold on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I guess that is it. Um, but it's 17. So, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be new in Christ, he is a new thing. I mean, he's a new creature. <laughs> My bad, y'all. He's a new creature. Mm. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So I should have read longer, y'all. But that's the one then. So let's give it all to God. And let's be on the right with God. And how do we do that? Daily surrender, spending time with God. It says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And if we know anything about God, it's he's stronger than anything and anybody. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So you guys, let's close this out in a prayer. Mm. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that you gave us. I pray that the enemy doesn't get to snatch the word, but as we prayed earlier, that our hearts would be good ground for the word to grow in. I pray that you continue to water it and lead us into how we can water it ourselves, God. Let us meditate on it and let us hold strong to the word. I pray that this blesses them. And God, I pray that it renews us all, keeping us in right standing with you. So thank you. Mm. Y'all, my thing done died. Mm. My screen went black. I restarted it, you guys, and then it just keeps turning off now. Mm. Lord, forgive me for the interruption. But thank you for all you're doing and all that you poured into us today. Thank you for gathering us. I pray that you keep us safe. And that you help us to spend more time with you. In your most holiest name, we pray to give us the desires that you have for us. To follow you, choose you, and to seek you. In your most holiest name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. That was a good, good word for me. Hopefully it changes your life. Actually, I know it'll change your life because God's word don't come back void. So you guys have a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you for spending time with me. Mm, feel free to watch this as much as you want. Feel free to ask questions even, you know, if there are certain things you want to learn about or grow in. Um, feel free to leave comments, to like, to subscribe, to share, and build this community for God. And building his kingdom is what we are doing and proud to do it honored to do it as well so thank you guys may you all be blessed have a beautiful and blessed day and be productive with god today not by yourself i challenge you to invite god into your day today and come back to me and comment what you asked him and invited him into and what he showed you. May your eyes be open. May your ears be ready. And may you be doers of the word and not just hearers. Y'all be blessed now. Have a good one. Bye.